fourth control within business environment is an interesting one that you need to stop taking. I mean, everything else we've looked at so far has been where do you sit within a supply chain, within critical infrastructure? Where does your risk management look like? Those are the first three. But this starts looking into the internal aspects of your company. And what I've got here, say you have an uh, part of your organization, a system, a business process that is driving revenue into your organization. This process is, um, this business process is, say it's again, our example is it's making $2 million a day. And you've said that this is, or a year, this is so critical to your organization, it produces something, you know, north of 60% of your overall revenue. So you as an org have said, you know what, this is very important to us. In order for that process to be delivered, you've determined that there are a set of servers and web front ends with corresponding databases and business processes, and maybe even a set of people that are supporting this revenue generation. It could be outside salespeople, and you've determined that it could be an internal corporate group that's supporting it along with a combination of systems, servers, and data. You've identified that. Great. That is an awesome first step. But are there critical services and the delivery of those critical services to make this all possible? And it could sit within this. It could be coming from outside of this organization uh, or this, this setup. Uh, the earlier example about using PCI, say, in order to do this, you were doing credit card payments and you've determined that there is a critical third party vendor that is handling your PCI compliance by doing all of your credit card processing. Have you identified this critical service within your overarching um, revenue generation and this risk as you've, as you've said it? It's a simple example, but I think it's one that not a lot of people do, but can you take a look at what it is that is making and driving revenue or creating a brand or whatever it is the risk that you've determined can you look within that and see what is it that is supporting that existence to be able to operate at that level that you expect? Can you determine that this database, maybe not this one, is the, uh, maybe it's your customer database, maybe it's a lead uh, uh, database, maybe it's the intellectual property that supports the algorithm that creates the math and then the experience and the service for uh, any of your customers. Whatever that is, you need to walk back through and create kind of that critical path within your org from the dollars being generated or the brand being created and marketed back through to what makes it so, what creates its existence, what allows it to continue, and then determine within that, you know, what is critical for its operation. At the end of the day, you might end up coming up with all of these aspects could be critical. That's fine. You've identified them and that's great. But what you need to do is actually do the exercise to determine each of those criticality. You might come across and figure that, you know what, in order for this to happen, we really just need this one aspect of the system or the process that we thought. These other capabilities, these other systems, these other services, these databases, maybe even the outside salespeople aren't as important for whatever reason because you've done a critical path exercise to the creation of the revenue and the risk that you've determined and established. So looking at your dependencies, looking at what your critical functions are and the delivery of those into the risks that you have, establishing those. And where this control fails to really articulate is communicating them. Again, anytime that we're identifying an asset or a risk or a critical service throughout the rest of the NIST controls, it's all about not only establishing the criticality, but also clearly communicating it, and if possible, documenting it somewhere uh, as a form of communication for use later, or for review later, or if you're caught in an outside regulator or a customer and you're being audited, it's very handy to have that clearly identified so that you can articulate whether it's you, the person who comes in after you, or just when you grow your team, somebody else can clearly articulate it as well. Try to help out the person who's coming in behind you. Anytime you're looking at these controls, it doesn't make sense to have all the information just live in your head. Take the time to document it while it's fresh and work on it.
take that as a communication play. And I think that's something that NIST should update within this to say that it's also communicated. Thanks.